Yesterday, the Cubs get blown out by the Padres, and they ended up dropping two out of three in San Diego, one of them being the eight-run game that cost them the series. We're going to talk about Nico Horner out of the lineup again. Craig Council says it's a finger from hard swings. That may be it. We're going to talk about Kyle Hendricks, who seemed downright pissed after the game at his performance and where the Cubs bullpen is right now. Are they overworked? Welcome to the Cubs baseball channel. Guys, get in the comment section. Let's talk some ball. Where are you from? Love to hear from all of you guys across the entire globe that love Cubs baseball. Let's get into that. Anthony's going to jump on the show as well. All that right here on the Cubs baseball channel. Let's get this thing started. Ladies and everybody, Mick Gillespie at Broadcaster Mick on the socials. And it is great to talk Cubs baseball with you guys. Anthony Pasquale is going to be on here in a second to talk some Cubs baseball. But let's start with the Cubs. Yesterday, dropping a tough game to the Padres. I, look, I've seen baseball. You guys have seen baseball. You know how it works. You go on the road, you are going to have games like this where you're not going to win. That's just the way it goes. And that's why losing the game with the eight-run lead was so tough because you want to win that game because it sets you up for the series, right? You win the middle game, and uh, so far on this road trip out west, the Cubs are one and two. But a tough loss to the Padres, and let's start with Nico Horner. Out of the lineup for the second straight game, Craig Council after the game said that Nico Horner's hand is bothering him because of some hard swings. He's been struggling. That goes all the way back to spring training. You know, it's hard to tell what's really going on in the world of baseball. Manager's going to take up for his player. And who knows? That may be why Nico isn't looking like the guy from last year. And eventually, it's going to all come together for him. And what you hope is that taking that time off is going to help him like it did say a Suzuki last year. Um, and maybe it's just, hey, get that hand healthy. Maybe it's just seeing the game and letting it slow down. But in the world of Major League Baseball, it is so competitive and it is hard to keep that pace up. But since we've seen Nico Horner, we've really, I don't remember him struggling quite like he has lately. And so being out of the lineup definitely hurts. Uh, the Cubs, just because, you know, when he gets rolling, he can be such a, you know, a, a table setter. Um, you know, is it that Ian Happ is hitting leadoff and maybe he's not getting the same pitches that he did when he was the leadoff hitter? It's tough to take Ian Happ out of the leadoff spot because he's been great at it. Had the hit streak, getting on base, taking walks. You love the fact that he can switch hit. If you're not careful, he's got power as well. Um, so. Taking Nico out defensively hurts, although I thought Miles Masterboni has done a nice job of kind of being that guy that you can put really anywhere on the diamond. And that makes the Patrick Wisdom decision interesting because Wisdom's going to be ready to go here soon. And I'm wondering what the Cubs do. I mean, there's a possibility where he stays in Iowa. There's a possibility where he replaces someone on the roster. And who knows? Maybe that someone is Masterboni. Um, because it feels like with Garrett Cooper and Patrick Wisdom, you kind of got the same guy twice, right? Whereas there's just a lot more versatility uh, with having uh, Master Boney because he can play outfield and infield and he can run uh, and, and, and can help you in a situation like this where you uh, have a day off. All right, let's talk to Anthony. Uh, we had a chance to get into all of these things as well. And the question was to get this going, is the bullpen overworked? And does that have to do with the fact that Cubs starters aren't going very? A another issue that the Cubs have had is the starters aren't going very far and the bullpens had to pitch a lot. The bullpens pitched, what, more than any other bullpen. 
do you think that the bullpen's overworked? And we saw that game against the Rockies early. Cubs blew the lead, came back to win. Uh, we saw the game, uh, the first game against the Padres, huge lead, bullpen blew it. Do you think that the bullpen is getting blamed, but it's really the fact that they're not allowing the starters to go as far, or, or is that even an issue right now? Well, here's the thing with me. I think a lot of people kind of get all wrapped up in innings from starters. I remember I was watching MLB Network a long time ago, and, and Greg Amsinger was the one who said it, and he was like, how come at the, the end of the year on the back of the baseball card they show innings, but on any given game, you're not worried about innings, you're worried about pitch count. And and like, so why don't you retract pitches that way? And you could say whatever you want, but council has let these starters go to their last pitch time and time again. All these guys, Wicks, 100 pitches, Assad, 100 pitches. Hendricks didn't have his best stuff last night. He went damn near 100 pitches. It's, mm. it's the fact that the Cubs starters are not making the better use of their 100 pitches. Right. 100 pitches should take you at least six, if not seven innings. The other thing that's really screwing this bullpen right now is the fact that Imanaga was dealing and only got four innings in before the rain. Yeah, bad luck. You could have probably penciled him in for at least six or seven, which saves some bullets before you go on this West Coast trip that has already taxed your bullpen a little bit. Um, so, yes, the bullpen is overworked, to answer your question. I don't think it's because the uh, starters should be left in longer, but I do think the starters should be going longer into games. It's just you can't justify sending Jordan Wicks out for a seventh inning when he's at 104 pitches or mm -hmm. putting Javier Assad out there for even another batter at 102. And um, even Ben Brown went almost 100 pitches in his start in this series. So you got to um, keep keep a limit on those pitch counts and and try to get work ahead in, in those counts and just avoid – being up near 80 after four innings, if you know, if you're at 43 after four innings, then you're feeling a lot better about it. Yeah, long season for the Cubs. Along the same lines as starting pitching, you know, the, Kyle Hendricks has had what three starts this year, and he's been okay at times, but it it just seems like the hitters are ahead of him. Are you worried that this is the end? For Kyle Hendricks? I I am a little bit worried. The thing with Hendricks is we've seen it time and time again that he'll have a few bad outings and then he'll really dial it in and give you about a month or two worth of really good starts. The only right. problem is this rotation needs it so badly right now yeah. that every fifth day I'm nervous giving the ball to Kyle Hendricks. And I saw a few people talking about it on Twitter, and you guys can get in the comments and tell me what you think. But if Jamison Tyone was healthy tomorrow, I'm Hendricks is almost the guy that you take out of the rotation. Brown looked good. Assad and Wicks and Imanaga. You won't touch those guys right now. Maybe it's Hendricks. Yeah, it's a tough spot because he's a great guy and awesome you love guy. him. And yeah. he's a World Series champion and, and he's an all-time cub. But it's it just when you're, you know, a soft tossing right hander and you're having trouble getting outs and watching the way that they're hitting him right now is that he's just not fooling anyone. Um, you start to worry. I mean, I know so at the beginning of the game against the Padre, there were some soft contact hits, but towards the end of his outing, I mean, they were just bombing away. And I, I felt like the same deal with Texas. Um, who was the other game against Colorado? Uh, I think uh, the Rocky, uh, no, the no first, Dodgers. It was our watch party. Yeah. Against the Dodgers. And, the Cubs overcame him giving up runs. So I don't know. I mean, it, the father times undefeated <laughs> and, and in baseball, it's definitely that way. The only time it wasn't that way was the steroids era because you get yeah. to the end of your, where you, your career would probably end. And then you balk up with some steroids <laughs> and you're 40 and you're still like you're 20, you know? Right. Uh, I hope that's not the case. But it does feel like if things don't turn around fast and you get Tyone back and you get Steele back, you can't put him in the rotation over anyone right now. Yeah. You, you know, like you get more out of Assad than him. You get more out of Ben Brown than him, at least so far this season. And you have a short leash in the, in the game of baseball if a pitcher can't get outs. And I don't know if – they you move them to the bullpen, but it almost feels like to me where you would 
you know, if he's not hurt, he would, could be, you know, the odd man out depending on how things go. So I hope that the, the answer is that the end is Neil for near for Kyle Hendricks. I just hope that the end isn't right now because he's just getting older. Right. I mean, you know, but at the same time, um, this is going to definitely magnify them looking at him because these have been three, three outings to start the season that just haven't been up to standard. Yeah. And that's the really tough part of Tyone and Steele being down right now is that even if you wanted to put him on the phantom IL or send him down, who the heck would start the fifth game? Yeah, then? Right. You know, like you're in a, a bad spot unless you want smiley to start, or you think was Nesky's ready to go. But I think, um, eventually because he he's too old and too established of a player to just send him down so well, you, you wouldn't would, do that yeah. you would probably have to do like a you know 10 day injury list with like shoulder inflammation and then let him get a rehab start or two in iowa and then you know see if he looks like he's ready to come back otherwise you know i'm i don't want to say it and i know this is going to ruffle f- feathers and i don't want anybody to be mad but it's starting to look like the last couple starts we got from Jake Arietta, and and that's just sad to see. Yeah, yeah, it feels like that to me too. Uh, I hate it, you know, just as a Cubs fan, yeah. as someone that knew him from the time that he was coming up and always believing in him. Uh, I mean, I told his dad, I said to his dad, I, I said, he's not only going to make the team before he was ever on the team, I said, he's. I think he's going to eventually start on opening day. And he, and he did. He did both mm-hmm. of those things, made the team. And then, you know, obviously that would have been, what, 2016, right? And then, yeah. um, and then eventually it was opening day starter. I love him. I think he's an awesome – he's just a legend for the Cubs. But Right. He's in that conversation for sure. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what is going on, but I can tell you that in this game, as competitive as it is, you just can't have – you know, this is three straight now where it has felt like – you know he's been teetering on every pitch and they're they're just they they they're seeing it they're setting it up you know who knows I, hopefully it's something that's correctable but i i do think that um you know that the end's near for all of us really i mean that's <laughs> the way life works right yeah and quick kudos to michael bush providing the only offense in yesterday's game had the two run homer that tied the score at 2 at the time Padres answered, I think, with eight straight runs to, oh. to win it 10 to 2. But um, he looks good. And, you know, if you take nothing else from that game, you should feel pretty good about your first baseman. Yeah, no no doubt. Cubs dropped the series to the Padres. It's a series they should have won because you can't lose games where you have an eight-run lead. I thought that them coming yeah. back in that middle game and winning the way that they did was impressive. They didn't give themselves much of an opportunity on the rubber match. But off – on the West Coast, take on the Mariners, then the Diamondbacks. This is a tough road trip right here. And and they're going to have to fight, scratch, and claw to win, you know, a game in each of these series. And you hope that they could win some series. I mean, we'd all love a sweep. But you go out to the West Coast and you play these type of series. And, um, you know, how many times have we gone out there and come back and, you know, you you, you don't win any or you win one or two? Yeah, and, and Seattle and Arizona are both loaded with talent, but early on this year, they haven't looked great. Um, I think Seattle got a, a big win yesterday. Um, I don't know if you were following that game. It was 1-1 heading into extras, and they won 6-1. to one. So they had a big 10th inning, I think, um, and they won that one. But they're, I think, only 5-8, and eight, and uh, the Diamondbacks aren't too much better. They're in that gauntlet of an NL West, but the Diamondbacks, Padres, Giants, they're all under 500 still. So... Um, these teams are also looking to get back on track. So it's setting up for some very entertaining games, but you hope, I mean, what are you looking for out of those six, three and three, and you come home two games over? Hey, I would take that. For sure. I would take that all day. You give me three and three on this and that'd be fine with me. You know, I, I don't remember the last time that the Cubs played the Mariners. I mean, I it's off the top of my head, but I remember the last time the Cubs played the Diamondbacks because you know, they got their butts kicked at the end of last season and what the, they went there and, and what they, I want to say they won maybe one or two of the games of the seven and, and all of those losses were compiled by the fact that 
they were all for the playoff spot. And it, and I yeah. think those games kept them out of the playoffs. And I, I look at the Diamondbacks, what they did in the offseason, getting to the World Series last year, and feel like they're in a really tough division. But I think that they're a team that's on the cusp of taking a jump this year, you know, because they add it to what they had last year that got them to the world series. Yeah. And then the Mariners, some people think they have the best starting rotation in baseball. Right. And the Cubs are going to avoid some of the big names, uh, but I think it's Miller, Hancock and Castillo Cubs obviously saw a lot of Castillo back when he was with the Reds. Um, And it looks like Wicks and Managa and Assad, I think Mm -hmm. for the three games for Chicago, um, it'll be fun to watch. I'm excited to see a Monaga pitch again. I love when that guy's on the mound. I, I feel confident at the very least about game two of that series. Um, but I think we'll preview all of it tomorrow. Yep. Let's do it tomorrow. Guys, get in the comments section and let's talk uh, Kyle Hendricks. And I, this isn't a bash Kyle Hendricks session, by the no, way. No, we love him. I'll tell you. I, I, yeah, we love him. He's a special guy. He's a special. Uh, he's got obviously pitched game seven of the World Series. He's done everything that you can do. But just like you mentioned, Jake Arrieta, there just comes that point where you're like, okay, is this, is there something wrong? Uh, Or have we passed that threshold of competitiveness? And I I hope that's not it because it just, it just felt like they just sat on all of his stuff and hit it a long way. And, um, and I felt uncomfortable the entire game. Now he did at least get into the sixth inning, but um, you know, which, hasn't been the case for other Cubs starters, but, um, you know, just another, I would say not a good outing. Yeah. I, I don't want to, you know, I haven't looked into this at all, but I I guess there's a possibility maybe he's, he's tipping pitches like that. That's how solid of the contact has been against him. It seems like they always seem to know what's coming, but yeah, I, I love Kyle Hendricks. I hope he figures it out. It benefits this team from top to bottom if he does figure it out, but, yeah, like you said, going to be a, an interesting couple of series out west, and uh, we'll have a few more late nights on deck. Yeah. Hey, guys, yeah, get your sleep. <laughs> yeah, rest day. <laughs> right. Uh, take a nap and then be ready for uh, for some baseball, right? Uh, right, out on the west coast. I mean, nothing like staying up until 1 o'clock in the morning to watch the Cubs win, but then you stay up and they lose and they blow an eight-run lead. It's double yeah, whammy the no next fun. day. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us. And we will talk to you again tomorrow. Like, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, hit the bell, be part of the Cubs baseball channel and share. Tell your other Cubs friends about it. But we really appreciate you guys being here for part of what we do every day. And go Cubs.